Hey and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, today I've got Gaz on. <clears throat> so Gaz, welcome on Tights TV, mate. Uh, appreciate you being joining me. So yeah, there's been a bit of things going off in the last couple of days. Obviously, board reshuffle, and uh, apparently we made an approach for a, a manager, head coach, Michael Duff. What's your yeah. take on that? Is a is an English manager, Gaz, uh, Gaz for a change? Um, well, I did I did think a few days ago after board reshuffle and and changes that have happened whether we'd go down a slightly different route. Mm. Um, so rather than going for your more or less unknown foreign managers, whether we would go down like a different route. Um, so if rumours are, are correct, um, mm. I don't really know much about the guy. I can remember him as a player for Burnley, mm. uh, but I didn't really know much about his managerial uh, record until uh, I've been looking this morning, and it's fairly impressive, to be fair. So wait and see. Yeah, uh, I think he's 44 years old, so he's still pretty young manager and all, isn't he? Uh, yeah. And like you say, I think he, he spent a fair amount of time at Burnley, Northern Ireland International. Yeah, and what what bits I've been reading up on, he likes to play. He he done pretty well at uh, at Cheltenham. Uh, I think it was nineteen stroke twenty season. He gone to semi finals, yeah, uh, playoffs, and then he got promoted to League Two. Mm-hmm. And he likes to play free at back. So it, for me, it's like if he knows leagues and he wants to progress in that, I think it could be you know tick all boxes. And and if we made an approach for him, and it said that it's doing, probably it's down to just you know. Image sent if he thinks that this uh, challenge would be worthwhile for him. Yeah, I mean, um, according to what I've been uh, looking at this morning and early on this afternoon, um, I think got promoted with like smallest budget in the league. Mm. Um, got a bit of a reputation for fetching young players through. Uh, plays a decent, attractive style of football. So, um, well, we'll wait and see what happens, I suppose. Yeah. Just following up on what you were saying there with you know with players and that uh, fetching and through academy, obviously it looks like uh, Martin Devane is going to be included in first team, so that could be a, a win-win. Uh, three academy players uh, they signed uh, new deals: Bremang, Winfield, and uh, Elliwell yesterday. Yeah. So I think retain list is still to be coming out, but as regards players, you know, would you be really upset if someone like Palmer or Apple Army it'd get released, you know, would would you be bothered? Well, I've just uh, had a similar conversation with taxi driver who just fetched, fetched me through to my mother's. Uh, I think until new managers installed, I don't really think you could, the retain list, really. Mm. Um, one manager might like a player and another manager then might not. So mm. I think until somebody's in, in, in charge uh, and looks at them, then... Some, if they do leave before new managers installed, then uh, they might feel a bit hard done by. But there might be some more that we decide to keep, or manager don't fancy. So I think yeah. it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bit of a strange time, really. I suppose because you don't really know what's going to be happening, what style of football that new manager is going to play, all fit mm. into a certain um, formation. So I don't know, a bit of a strange one, really. Yeah, it's 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 come at like a, a weird time, isn't it? Because like you say. If manager comes in and he's taking over a group of players, it's like, well, these are not really going to fit into what I'm going to play with. And we, we don't want to be going the same way again. We're just going to be like, you know, square pegs and round holes kind of thing. It needs to be players what we've got, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, you might have players who were, who've been out on loan for last season, either playing abroad or playing like for Oxfords and people like that. Well, manager might absolutely fancy or just mm. think, nah, not having them. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, bit of, a, bit of a strange one, really. And uh, whoever whoever does end up getting manager job or head coach job, whichever route we're going to go down, um, got some big decisions to make one way or other, really. Yeah. So I'm just going on to, uh, you know, big decisions like players and all the saleability of players. And obviously, like, you're always going to get it, aren't you, with such as like your Woodrow's and your Morris, your Styles and Britons to go. And a question I asked to someone over a week, uh, week and what, with this board reshuffle, what's happened now? Could you like alter? Yeah, we're going to have to sell some players, but we would have to sell the amount of players. Um, I'd I'd like to think we could keep odd one or two, just to like try and try and help out the youngers youngers coming through. So, if say Woodrow did get sold, I'd like to keep Morris Fenn, either one or other, just to help out kind of thing. I, I think I'd I'd pair of them. Um, we need to at least keep one of them. Mm. Um, 
because we well our uh, our recent record of signing strikers um ain't the greatest is it let's mm. be right about it apart from mm. morris i think mm. rest of them no so i think we're going to keep at least one there's a couple in there like you've got your uh, you've got styles and um elik who mm. have got international ambitions one's going to be playing in a world cup shortly yeah there's not many league one players who play in a world cup final mm. So it wouldn't surprise me if one or two of them both went. Mm. Um, I think keepers probably, you don't really get many keeper transfers, but um, no. I think if it hadn't been for Collins, first half at season, we'd have been down before Christmas because yeah. he, he, he saved us more points than what a striker as a midfielder has earned us. Mm. So it wouldn't surprise me to see some of them leaving. How the new board views the seven to nine million, depending what exact figures are, what we're losing and how much we've got to recoup. Mm. Um, to, to make that difference, to bridge that gap. Again, we'll wait and see. It's just yeah. all up with area, which is frustrating, but um, we are where we are. Yeah. I think we board ratio for what happened last week and a, a lot of, a lot of uh, fans, me included as well, like our working away and my son texted me about coming down from Newcastle. And he said Conway and Lee have gone. I was like ecstatic, and and I didn't even read into it. I didn't even know what out, uh, outcome what, uh, is. And obviously, it's come to light that they're still involved with small shares of this other. But how I'm looking at it is that this is their time to shine, such as like Gene uh, Gene Crime, mm. uh, Parek, and all that because coming out of good things. Khalid is that what I wanted to do like now, and I think a statement for me is that. If they've made an approach, which we have, we believe we have done to Michael Duff, and they wanted to do this, uh, for me, we've like actually like stuck back and said, you know what, this is what we're going to do, because I think the the need to like sell it to the fans. We've had a, we've had a poor season. We've had it's been a shambles on it. Sure. So I think this now it's like right, we're going to put his flag in ground. This is what his intentions are, and I think get your manager coaching, and then then you can take on on board. Because they're still, I know they extended the season ticket uh, thing early bird. So for me, I'd like to say, I mean, I don't know if I'm right or wrong in saying this, but I'd like to think, right, if you've extended it while end of May, I'd like to think then that you're going to get a manager in place before end of May just to get more tickets sold. Uh, yeah, I've got to agree. Um, they've got to, the new ownership model has got to hit ground running big time. They've got to do something because I've never in I'm knocking 50 year old now. Hmm. I've been going since the early 80s. Um hardly miss a match, only miss about three last season, home and away. Um which I think requires me being sectioned to be honest. Like but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I've been there seen it and done it, and I've never felt as far away from my football club as I do mm. at the moment. So it, there's, there's got, they've got to do something out of ordinary. Mm. And even if next season it's just a top half finish and we retain players, we play an entertaining style, we'll get people back into habit of going because, I mean, the last couple of games at oh, well, yeah, I bet there were a third at season ticket holders who even bothered turning up. Mm. Uh, which just, it, it must show, hence the um, changing. Um, leadership, ownership, whatever you want to class it as. Mm. Um, but yeah, some some things got to change to get people back in love with actually going to matches again. Yeah, I mean, I'm fifty. I've I've hit the big five zero. So I, oh, yeah. My, yeah, yeah, I'm big yeah. five zero, mate. So uh, <laughs> I remember. I mean, I, I remember going in uh, old Brewery stand, and it was it were a night game against West Ham. I think it was Little Bus Cup Milk Cup back then, and. All the way through that, and it's like what you, you've hit nail at there. We didn't have a lot of money back then. We went through administration where club look were like down and out. But even like last season, I think it was one of them kind of seasons where you just sent distance away from club itself. We're no unity. You were getting like splits among fan bases. Like, I'm not going yeah. for this, I'm going for that. And, and I'm like, it's bad that, you know what I mean? And, and I, I'm hoping like now, nah, this change in like what you've said, ownership. I'm hoping we've turned that and we've seen a bit of light. We've seen a bit of light and let's just build on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I weren't expecting last week to happen. Mm, no. If I'm being completely honest, I think it was a bit, bit of a bolt out at blue for everybody. Yeah. Um, I've not really heard one discerning voice 
to say that it was wrong decision. Mm. So hopefully it is the right decision and we, we crack on and move on and let's fall back in love with club because I, I have fallen out of love a little bit, if mm. I'm being totally honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, even back in League One days and things like that, I felt much more passionate about going at match and about the players and about the ownership and things like that than I, I, than I have done. Um, so I hope I'm not the lone voice. I hope other people feel exactly the same. Yeah, I think you, uh, like I said, I think you a little bit other people feel the same. And a good point where you hit on VAR, you know, last few games, it, it, like I said, we've got to be like less than a third VAR and people were like, just not get up, but just like had enough. And it's like, you know what? I've got probably better things to do, spending time at family. We all know what financial state you know, cost the country's going up, everything's going up, so you've got to prioritise it. Yeah. So going on to, like, probably the last, you know, last section just to tie it all up, good call what you said here about League One, you know, togetherness and that. Do you see us next season that it's going to be more a... Uh, it's probably an unfair question, but it all depends with, like, managing and that winning, but would you be seeing next season as, like, a, a regroup of players, togetherness, and then build on it, and then next season to go for it. Or would you think, ah, do you know what we could have a call for playoffs? Um, I'd like to think we'd be competitive. Yeah. But again, it all comes down to new manager recruitment. Who we're going to lose? Because if we lost Woodrow, if we lost Morris, if we lost Ellick, if we lost Collins, mm. if we lost Styles, if we lost big Britain, chunk in it. Yeah. Then oh, you you tend to think, might be proved wrong, but you tend to think that they're going to be either young academy lads or unproven mm. or up-and-coming League One, League Two players. Yeah. And when you've got... Ma- oh, I hate using a massive word like but when you've got very, very competitive teams like mm. Sunderland's and Ipswich's and Wednesday's and p- people like that who are, are still battling to, to go yeah. up, yeah. Um, it's a, it'd be a big ask to ask a group of young lads... Um, I've got an analogy for you. A kid I was speaking to the other day who was a ground worker um, and he runs a team of about six or eight lads. And when he's on a job, he doesn't send six or eight lads out who are inexperienced to do a job. He'll mm. send four or five of them with three lads who've done a job for 20 odd years. Yeah. And to make them better, yeah. to get the job done, but no, it's been doing correctly. Mm. And you can say the same about football team, which is nice cool. to see young lads coming through. Like, is it Ak- Akroyd? Um, yeah. Who made his debut striker who's been out, out, out on Marsh, morning, uh, in that, New York yeah. and that. Yeah. Fantastic. But you can't mm. have 11 of those. Mm. You need to mix them in with, well, the word, the experience word that we've been saying for four, five, six years. And Sol Bauer was a perfect example of that, weren't yeah. he, when he came in? Yeah. It... And, and I, I'm guessing that Elliot won't be a player that he is now. If you hadn't have had that initial grounding, we uh, we assault Bauer alongside true. him. True, very true that, and I I think that as well. Um, good call that was Sol Bauer, and I I saw that a bit when Matty James came back on loan. I thought oh, yeah. it allowed uh, Mowit to mo- express his some morning game. You know what I mean? And it's like what you say. It's like that, like I said, experience, but it's also that leader on pitch and. Yeah. I think you also need that as a manager as well. You need that leader. When you look on, you know, you look previous season, it was Ishmael, you saw that drive, that passion there. And the yeah. previous manager with Ed, it's been like lackluster. And it's and if you're playing not right on pitch, for me, I'd expect my manager to give me a, a rollicking and say, come on. But when you see him sat down, he's not really in it. It don't really pass on to the players, does it? To like urgency kind of thing. And, and, and some of it's really, really obvious. Mm. I say you could be worse footballer in the world. You can football, ball in Rosette. Mm. When you want, I mean, how many, the, 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 three out of four games that we conceded in 90 odd minutes. Yeah. Because there's six points when we were just up on Reading's coattails and we, yeah. we could have caught them. And we lost six points in 90th mm. minute onwards or 85th minute onwards, whatever yeah. it were. Uh, but just for simple, just don't put a crossing box. Basics, Get rid of it. it. Set up again. Make them come up pitch, and it's, it's just simple little things like that, which are young, and they'll just get proper excited and, and not think about it. And again, you could be worse football player at will, you can stick ball in stand. Basic stuff, in it, basic stuff, yeah. So, the ball down to so, yeah, everybody what's been watching, uh, please leave your comments and everything what you uh, below what we, uh, me and Gaz has been talking about. 
All being well, guys, when return list comes out, uh, I'll get you on, back on again and we can yeah. go through and, you know, we probably might be a few surprises and be, oh, well, you know, something to discuss about. But, guys, I've appreciated you joining me, mate. I've really appreciated it. Yeah. So, everybody what's watching, please like, subscribe and share. Uh, one thing left to say. Thank <music> you.